be a harper is to sacrifice a part of yourself for the greater good, to be the pebble in the charger's path, the knife that frays the hangman's rope, the barking dog that draws the hunter's eye. We do not act for glory, but for the good of all. To be a harper is to be a hidden force of good. We wear the mark unseen, and we do the deeds unnoticed. Our organization spans the world, from the deep jungles of Maztica to the open plains of Karatur, and today I shall teach you about how we are organized in Faroon. There are different structures that exist among us in other parts of the world, but the structure that I will describe to you is the one most common in Faroon and is exemplified by the Harpers of Waterdeep. At the very top of the chain of command, we have the High Harpers. The High Harpers sit in a council of ever-changing size, where new members can be installed by vote and a member sits on the council until they die or retire. High Harpers have insight into all the movements of the lower ranks, give directions to the larger organization, and make sure that all our efforts are aimed at the right targets. Below the High Harpers are the Spy Masters. Spy Masters direct their agents in broad strokes, trying as best they can to maximize the return of the agent's time and effort in achieving the direction set by the High Harpers. The Spy Master's main role is to keep track of agents in the field and report back to the High Harpers, but when there is a need, a Spy Master can be called on to join the fight. Spy Masters are appointed by the High Harpers, usually after taking into account the wishes of previous Spy Masters. When the Spy Master cannot directly communicate with an agent, a high-ranking agent will be assigned the role of a handler. Handlers act as a go-between for the agent and the Spy Master. Handlers don't often direct agents the way that Spy Masters do, but when there is an emergency, they will take up that responsibility as well. The bulk of the Harpers consist of agents, sometimes referred to as scouts. Agents are the Harpers that you are most likely to run into, whether you realize it or not. They are free to pursue any perceived threat and gather information as desired, but the organization thrives on reliable reporting, so working with handlers and spy masters is of critical importance. If you were to join the Harpers, it will most likely be an agent who approaches you. They seek out not just the best, but also someone they perceive to believe in the cause. When you are an apprentice agent, you are often referred to as a fledgling, and all agents must undergo some mentoring by a senior agent before being released into the field. Below the agents and fledglings, we also have a large group of support personnel who are not part of the Harpers, but still provide a vital service for them. They are aware that they are helping Harpers, and will keep anything they know a secret. They do not take the oath, nor do the Harpers see them as viable agents to be sent into the field. This group is usually referred to as the Harper Supporters, or Street Eyes. It is worth noting that even though you might see a person with a Harper pin, these pins are currently in fashion, so it does not necessarily mean anything. Nobles and socialites will often wear them as a sign of support while never having any interaction with the Harpers. Due to this, most Harpers have a hidden mark tattooed on their skin that can be revealed with a secret phrase. It's a shame you can't trust the pin anymore. What was once a sign of respect and honor is now simply a sign of wealth and stupidity. And so we wrap up our tale of the Harpers. As always, follow the word of Ogma, and like, share, subscribe.